Hello again, I'm Henry T. And welcome to Be Inspired with Henry T. Right here on KZQ Channel 32. Boy, I get curiosity seekers from all over the state. What's your show about? I heard about it. Now we're on YouTube. We see it here. We see it there. I have a story for you, Henry T. Can I convey that story to you? Yes. With an exclamation point. I want your story. Call me here at KZQ Channel 32 at 884-8355. E e email, as they say, Henry T. to Original Game Face. Yeah, Original Game Face at gmail.com. Here I am. I want your story. And just like Diego Gallegos, Dr. Diego Gallegos, who's with us today, he shared his story a couple of weeks ago. It was so good. He's in for the second try. Man, it's good to have you back, doctor. How are you? I am doing great, Henry. Thank you very much for having me back. I was inspired, by the way, so thank you. Inspired by the show. Oh, and I hope the people around you felt inspiration from the man that lives in their own house or brothers or whomever surrounds you. I hope you touched their heart and made them happy and made them proud. Did any of that happen? Well, you know, Henry, my, my family has always been proud of me since I was a little boy. Amen. So I've had that throughout my whole life, you know, either my parents being proud of me, my, my uh, siblings being proud of me, uh, and now my wife and my children being proud of me. So, yeah, they, it all happened, Henry. They were really excited about wow. it. So thank you for that opportunity. And, you know, sometimes we take our own lives, our own stories for granted. We're not really aware of what's happened until somebody focuses in on it. And all of a sudden, wow, that's us. Then the pat's on the back to everybody. Because what does it say? It takes a village to raise one young child or to influence that child. And you were a child. And you grew up to be a very strong leader in our community. A lot of people touched your life. And they continue to touch my life, Henry. As we talked the last time, I really focused on my, my parents and how they touched my life and all our lives, all our all our my siblings' lives and and many more. They 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 type they touched their own families' lives and their own siblings' lives because they were so powerful. But for me, I've been just blessed because not only did my family touch my life, but I, I was really blessed with uh, my teachers. I had yes. a lot of teachers that touched my life. You know, wow. I told you last time about Lola Armijo, yes. that was my second grade teacher, and then we worked together. I had a teacher named Ben Chavez who was my fifth grade teacher was an incredible, uh, had an incredible impact on me since fifth grade. And they went on and on. I could give you a whole list. We could talk about just my teachers Let's for the whole show. Let's talk about that inspiration. Yeah. Teachers, who are they today? Sometimes we take them for granted. And to me, wow, wow. what a catalyst they were in my life. And how underpaid they are, their profession versus other professions. And they were the most important part of the inspiration of that fun fundamental foundation. Yet you look at the pay scale, your thoughts of teachers. Well, for sure, underpaid, Henry, no question about it. And I think in lots of, time, lots of times they're underappreciated. Most folks don't uh, understand how challenging it is to work with a large group of young people, whether they're kindergartners. You know, can you imagine trying to keep 20 uh, or so kindergartners moving in the same direction when they all come to you with different uh, you know, skills, different experiences. Some of them can read a book by the time they get there. Others don't even know their letters. I mean, big range. And yet teachers are expected to try to move them all forward to meet a certain standard. Uh, think about when they get to, to high school. You have some of them that are that are already basically adults and ready to move into the adult world. Others that come in and they're shy and they're you know struggling with things. And the teachers are expected to bring it all together and move them all forward. It's a huge challenge. And then you do it in a, in a situation where all this political stuff all around them is constantly saying we're not doing a good enough job. And and I I, I don't know any teacher who would say we're doing the, the kind of job we want to do. They want to do better every day. Yes. So it's a challenge for them to be hearing all these things and to, and to have to put it aside so that they, when they walk in and work with our young people that, you know, they, they don't let all that stuff that's out there influence them. They're going to focus on making sure they take that young person to the best place possible. That's, a, that's, that's hard. It's challenging. Um, but 
it's rewarding, and that's what keeps all of us that, that were educators or are educators at the table. It's still, wow. you know, the most important thing that you can do, I believe, is to be a teacher. With your permission, I would like to devote our efforts for the remainder of this show, this entire show, devoted to your 95-year-old dad. And he's in the audience, and I want him to really feel the impact. You were a godsend to the school district to be the superintendent of schools. Now, you've been elevated to executive director of YDI, Youth Development Incorporated. Congratulations on that move. Thank you very much. And if it's okay with you, do I have your permission to devote this whole show to your father? For sure, Henry. Uh, I'm, I'm where I'm at because of my father and my mother. My mother's not with us anymore, so we can't kind of devote to her. But she's upstairs oh, watching, so she knows. Front row it. seat. Just, for sure. For sure. The, <laughs> the best seat in the house, probably. Amen. So, so I, yeah, please do so. Uh, my dad would love that. From superintendent position to YDI executive director, easy transformation, easy transition? Henry, I would say um, yes, it was an easy transition. Partly because the last thing that I did in the school district before I retired was I was assistant superintendent for school and community support. And so my work was around parent engagement, uh, finding ways to help families engage with their children. So it was about that whole area of supporting the community and the family. So that was an easy transition to YDI because that's what YDI does, support children, youth, and families. That's, that's, all, that's what we're all about. Our mission is to help children, youth, and families achieve their full potential. What an incredible mission. So wow. not only was it an easy transition, but that's, that, that mission kind of just grabs you and pulls you right in. So when I saw that uh, the, the opening for the position, I was like, that's a perfect place for me. It would be an easy transition because I've been involved in that work for most of my life, whether it's uh, in the school district or uh, as a community member. So it was an easy transition for me from that perspective. Now, Doctor, you have a, a book in your hand. I'm curious why you're moving it around, why you're holding on to it, and it's got your name and it's got all the defining parts of your new experience. What are you holding there? I'm holding let me ask you what YDI is as you hold that. Well, let me, let me uh, share it with you, Henry. I think I, I shared it the last time a little bit, but this is the 2014-15 annual report from YDI. So it really speaks to what YDI does and YDI's successes with, its, with the people we serve. Uh, but I also like to tell people this little girl on the cover here is just like the cutest thing in the world. Wow. Uh, why wouldn't we want to find a way to support this young lady and everybody else that we serve in YDI? But this annual report is something that the organization has done every year. So it's a way for us to be able to share with our community what successes we've had in the past. And because of the way that we are set up as a nonprofit, it's also a way for the folks who want to provide uh, donations to us to know what we did. So they know that we're using the money that we get from them in an appropriate way to serve the young people and the families that we serve. Okay, in there probably the vehicles, the organizations, throughout the state of New Mexico yes. that serve young kids like this beautiful little lady. Yes. Families. What am I talking about? Okay. What does the organization consist of? Who are those that work? Who do you serve? Okay. Well, Henry, first of all, we serve seven counties in New Mexico. Okay, seven counties. We start in, in Socorro County, coming up to uh, Valencia, Bernalillo County, uh, Torrance County, and then up in Rio Arriba and Taos counties. So we serve a wide range of, of uh, people in New Mexico. Now, the majority of the work we do, Henry, is in our Head Start program. So we have uh, early childhood programs funded by the federal government to provide services to children who are five years old in Head Start. But we also have additional resources, both from the federal government and from the state, to start with, with uh, children when they're right after they're born. We work with the, with the parents, with the mothers. Uh, in our in our uh, Head Start services that we provide, so we start when they're when they're little kids, and they they move through. So by the time they get to Head Start in fifth grade, they could have been with us already for four or five years, and some of them are, uh, and their families have been with us throughout that time. So Head Start is the biggest part of YDI. And like I said, we have Head Starts throughout those seven counties. We also provide uh, support in those seven counties to young people through our work, in force, uh, work development area. 
Uh, we have money that comes from the state of New Mexico to provide support for young people who need training and jobs. Uh, so those are two of our big products. But we do a whole lot of other things, Henry. Uh, the, the, it's, for me, the, the, the thing that is most exciting and that has the most potential for us to think about is that we serve about 1,700 uh, young people in Head Start. Well, all those young people come with families. And the Head Start model is one that's not just about supporting the child, but it's support about supporting the family. You know, I, I spoke to somebody the other day who said, one of the challenges for the families that are in Head Start is that while they're, while they're with you in Head Start, the family is also getting support, not just the child. When they go into public education, it's really a challenge for the school districts to provide support to families. That really isn't their mission. So they, all of a sudden, they're missing that part. They were getting such good support from YDI, and now they're in a school district that doesn't really, that's not their, their role to provide them support. So organizations like ours, that is our role, is to provide support to, to families. So, so the model is one where you're working with the young child and working with their family at the same time. So if their family, let's say, Henry, uh, is struggling because um, maybe, maybe they have an older child who's you know, maybe dropped out of school, well, YDI could reach out to that child and maybe put them in one of our uh, GED programs or put them in, into a program where they're getting training uh, so that they can then get into a job later on. We, we place uh, young people in jobs. We have many, many employers in, the, in, uh, this, in, in those areas that I talked about who support us. We provide young people to them for mentorships, internships. Uh, so we provide the training, they take them there and really take them to the next level. And the intent is that they get a job later on. Wow. So here we are, we're working with the little ones, and we're working with the older ones. So the family can get all kinds of support from us. Unbelievable. Yeah. We're at halftime already. We've got more to talk about. You know, hypothetically, or let's go into a real family situation without mentioning their names. Okay. And we'll find out literally how YBI helps the family situation and maybe pick some examples of their success stories, a testimonial that'll hit your heart of the power of this organization. We'll do that when we come back on the other side. I'm Henry T. This is Dr. Diego Gallegos. We're talking about YDI today, right here on KZQ Channel 32. Stay right there. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Malloy Dodge, Albuquerque's new and used Dodge and Ram truck dealer since 1955. I'm Nick Malloy from Malloy Dodge. For four generations, we've been serving thousands of New Mexicans from all across our fine state. Over 65 years of trust. Our family serving yours. Malloy Dodge, we're proud to stand behind our community. Thank you for supporting family programming. This program has been sponsored in part by Butterfield Jewelers, located at 2411 San Pedro Northeast, offering appraisals, handcrafted jewelry, gold and jewelry buying, and jewelry and watch repair. Butterfield Jewelry is owned and operated by Mike, Teresa, and Bernie Butterfield. Butterfield Jewelry, 505-884-5747. Welcome back, I'm Henry T, part two of Dr. Diego Gallegos here today. It's his second trip here in two weeks. He's been so influential to all of us across New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, Colorado, that we brought you in by popular demand, doctor. Hey, how about that? Thank you very much, Henry. <laughs> YDI, I know of it. Thousands of people get served by it every day. For those that don't know of the function, the effect of YDI, do you mind capsulizing today and take it right to the family setting and that beautiful little girl, maybe she's your shining example, I don't know, but take us into the family and show us all today how YDI has made a powerful effect. So Henry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about a couple of different families, okay? 
One is a family uh, who, who was struggling in another part of the state, decided to move here to, uh, to Bernalillo County, to Albuquerque. And they had a young man who was already struggling in school. He was not, it looked like he wasn't going to graduate. So he came to YDI and said, you know, I need some help. I need some help. Uh, I don't have a home. Uh, my family is, doesn't have a home. We're just kind of coming here because we're struggling. Uh, how, how can you help us? And they got sent to us by another agency that said, you know, this family needs help. So the young man right away got engaged in our GED program. And we provided him support to get GED, to get some training. And then he really made the leap to go to school after that. Because once he got his GED, he realized based on, and, and we have people that are constantly sharing with these young folks, you know, okay, if you, if you go to school, here's what your life might be like. If you don't, it might be this way. So he decided he would go to a CNM. Mm -hmm. So he's at CNM. His family, we helped them find a place for them. Uh, we engage with other folks who, who do that kind of work. So we found a, a place for them, an apartment for them. So they were taken care of there. They had a little one, so we engaged the little one in our Head Start program. Wow. You know, so all of a sudden they have that, and then the family started getting support so that they could start uh, getting back on their own feet. So we have, uh, we, we, we do things like financial literacy for the families, helping them understand how to do that, uh, how, to, how, to, how to build wealth. Uh, with their, with their, with the, with the amount of money they have, we then help the families start looking for work. Okay, the young man is getting the kind of support he needed. The the, the little one is in school, uh, and the family is now getting that kind of support. So that's one that's one example. Anybody, uh, there's a there's a I want I want to talk for a minute about another group of young people that we serve that that really are are they have a lot of challenges and not everybody is willing to really support them. And these are young people that have been, had some uh, interaction with the juvenile justice system. We have one program where we get young people that that come out of the juvenile detention center uh, and they are uh, they're sent to us because these young people are either on probation or they have some kind of court requirement that you know that the court uh, expects of them as part of their probation. So our job is to again help them get them, you know, either keep them in school or get them through and get uh, some kind of a GED. So we do that on a regular basis with these young people. Uh, the intent here is that you know we don't want them to end up back in the in the correctional system, and you know the the the. The, the research, the statistics on the number of folks who come out of uh, correctional facilities and then go back in is huge. It's a huge number of people, you know. So our job is to make sure the young ones at least stay out of that system. So, so they need support from us to do that. So, so we're helping them by making sure that, that they stay out of the juvenile justice system. So we have folks that are working with them on helping them learn, you know, uh, life skills. How do you move from where you were onto the next phase? Helping them get their GEDs or helping them stay in school, uh, and and this group, you know, is a group for me that that I think uh, there's a lot of young folks in that juvenile, uh, in well, in our county uh, facility that you know are 18 and, and over. You know, those folks, same thing. A lot of them come out and then end up right back in because the, they don't really have a support system. Wow. So YDI is a support system for folks who are in in those areas. A, a, cha a real challenging uh, program we have is our gang intervention program. You know, we have young people who come to us, again, court-ordered at times, or their families come to us, because here's a young person who's gotten themselves involved with a gang, and they, they, they might want out, or they might have been ordered to get out, whatever, whatever the case might be. Our job is to help them stay out of that gang uh, influence. And so we're working with them constantly. I mean, these are folks, who, young people who can already be hardened by the time we get them because, you know, they've had a hard life as it is or they've had challenges and they end up in this gang situation and then they don't know how to get out of it. So our job is to do that. So we take them through a whole leadership training to help them get out. Henry, of the folks that we served in 2014-15, 74% of that people that were already involved in gangs did not repeat any kind of violent criminal activity, 74%. So yeah, there's still 25% that we got to work on, but 74% of them really moved forward in their life. That to me is like wow. such a powerful thing. What a know. statistic, 75%. Yep. How many of our kids out there, I don't know if you have the exact number, how many of them without our parents' supervision every day, parents are at work, how many of them are vulnerable 
for that temptation of the wrong influence. Henry, I think almost all children are vulnerable. If they're not engaged in school, if they're doing poorly in school, if they don't have anything to do after school, you know, we have, uh, we have after school programs in eight schools we had this year. If kids don't have something to do after school, it's easy for them to get involved in the wrong thing. I mean, we've seen it. You know, we've seen it in our lives as we were growing up. We saw many young people who ended up going that way. So I think they're all vulnerable. And, 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 uh, and sometimes their families are able to help them and move them out of it. And sometimes their families don't have the ability to do that. Their families are trying just to make a living. Or they're, I mean, working two and three jobs, you know. They don't have that, that the support systems that, that I had growing up. I mean, we didn't have very much in terms of money or things, but we had support systems. My mom stayed home. So there was always somebody at home for us to go to. Wow. Not everybody has that. You know, not everybody has it. So Bottom line, your organization is working. Yes. And literally, you've got categories of success there. We do. That uh, you know by the presence of statistics and real lives being saved, and you can actually interview better than a statistic or category there's the practical experience at work, and here's the little girl or young boy who said no to the gangs, no to the drugs, yes. and now they know how to say no. If there are parents out there right now fighting the fight that they think is inevitable and maybe unsolvable, you've got a message for them that your organization can help their family. What is that message? Well, number one, Henry, if, you, if you're having a challenge with your children or your family, you know, it's nothing to be, um, what's the right term here? They shouldn't be ashamed of that. You know, sometimes families think that there's nobody out there to help them or they think that they're failures. Mm. Well, they're not. It's hard to raise a family in, in today's world. It, it probably always has been, Henry, but it's really hard today. It's very hard. So the first message is don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, ask for help at your school. That's one place for sure, you know, that you can go to. And if you, if that doesn't work or if you're, if you don't feel that's the right place for you, you can call us at YDI. YDI uh, is, has offices around the, the city. So there's different places you can go. Uh, for, if folks are able to get on the internet, YDINM, YDINM.org has, uh, has, you know, that's our website. We have all kinds of information there. Please get on there. Uh, in fact, if you go to your school and you say, you know, the school may say, you know, well, we don't, uh, that's not something we do, but here's an organization that could help you. So please, you know, go to, go to your school. They'll probably refer you to us. As but you look do, out there with your conceptual skill, what do you see that we really need to know? What are the temptations of our children every day? List them, hardcore this, that. What are those influences that bring our children down? I think the, the main influence, or Henry, is when kids are not engaged, okay? They're not engaged because maybe they, 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 they're not uh, doing well in school, so they, maybe they don't have the academic skills. So it's hard to engage in something that you're not successful at or doing well at. So, so I think engagement is the biggest issue. Mm -hmm. you, know, it, and, and, you, know, you know from the, your days in, in the boys' clubs, when you had those young people engaged there, they weren't out doing other things. Amen. It's about engaging them in different things. So if a family doesn't have the ability to engage, then folks like us can engage. Schools engage. But that's, to me, the, the biggest thing. When you're not engaged, it's easy for other things to happen. Uh, I always remember, Henry, that somebody said to me years ago uh, that one of the things that gangs do really well is they create a really good environment, almost like a family environment for the people in their gang. So if you don't have, an, 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 if you're not engaged in something else and somebody brings this to you and all of a sudden it's, you know, this great engagement and, you know, you, all of a sudden you have all these friends, it's easy to go there, isn't it? So I think as a society, we have got to find a way to create opportunities to engage our young people in positive sorts of activities. Gosh, and it goes on to drugs and all these different yes. pestilence and temptations and yes. the list goes on. On and on. But engagement and family involvement. Tell them out there right now how they can reach out to your organization by phone, by website, visit live and in person. The time is now. They hurt. They need help. 
Will you help them with the number yes, to I contact can. your group? First of all, Henry, if they if they want to call me, they can call me at 250-4944, 250-4944, and I will connect them to somebody. Uh, they can come to our main office at 6301 Central Avenue um, Southwest. It's about two blocks um, east of Central and Coors on the west side. Mm -hmm. We have two offices there. They can come there. Um, they can they can get on our website ydinm.org and there's there's all kinds of opportunities there for them to connect to someone around the services they they're looking for and you'll you'll see on the website all the different things we do so you can find the right person to go to directly but if not please feel free to call me or come by our office that's uh, we'll certainly uh, find a way to get them connected where they need to be connected wow in our closing 45 seconds, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard what he's had to say. You know the hurt in your immediate environment, your kids, your family. They need housing. They need, they need to stop that young man from going to those gang meetings. Drugs are overpowering. Wow. It's not just pie in the sky, make believe, this interesting subject matter. It's real life and death situations in our closing 30 seconds. Is that accurate? It is, Henry. It is life and death. You know, if a young person doesn't get engaged and they end up, you know, dealing uh, in, in drugs or something like that, it's life and death. Uh, if they end up in the correctional system, that, that could be life and death. Uh, if you don't have a job and you don't have food to, to give to your children, that's life and death. You know, this is the real stuff that many, many, many families are struggling with. And I believe that it's all our responsibility. We just happen to be an agency that does that. But I believe it's all our responsibilities to engage with these families and to wow. provide support for them. God bless you, Dr. You. Diego Gallegos. Thank you, Henry. For being here today. Thank you. With an extremely powerful message. Thanks. And ladies and gentlemen, YDI is there for you. Please reach out to them. Throw the number again. 250-4944. Wow. 250-4944. Got it? Thank you. Thank you for watching today here on KZQ Channel 32. And another special thank you to Dr. Diego Gallegos for being our guest today. We'll be back with more inspiration tomorrow right here same place. Don't miss it. See you tomorrow. If you got a story, don't forget to call me with it, 907-4523, or email originalgameface at gmail.com. It's been great talking with you today, right here on KZQ. Remember, we're on every morning right here, The Inspired with Henry T., 8 o'clock on KZQ, channel 32.